The Manhattan DA takes new steps in the Trump investigation when we could see charges if there are any. Tracking the end of the showers and storms and humidity, what to expect by morning. Dining outdoors along the Hudson. New York Live has a look at the restaurants you have to check out in Westchester. This is News for Now for May 26. I'm Adam Cooperstein. And New York prosecutors have taken their next steps in the Trump investigation. A grand jury has reportedly convened, and they will consider possible criminal charges against the former president, his company, or any executives. Now, this doesn't mean charges will definitely be filed, but it does mean the case is entering a new and not unexpected phase. The Manhattan District Attorney is investigating a number of issues involving Trump's businesses, from taxes and to how assets were reported, to get loans, and then also how top executives were paid. All of this was first reported by The Washington Post, and it suggests the DA believes there is evidence of a crime, but it could still be months before we find out about the filing of any charges. Former President Trump again slammed the investigation, calling it an ongoing witch hunt. A Brooklyn man is facing charges after police say he was involved in two anti-Semitic incidents over the weekend. Investigators say 20-year-old Daniel Schaukett is one of the men who yelled anti-Jewish slurs at a group in Borough Park on Saturday and then vandalized a car. They believe the same man also punched two teens on Ocean Parkway. Schaukett is charged with aggravated assault and harassment as hate crimes. There's a new incentive for New Yorkers to get vaccinated. It's connected to the Knicks playoff run. Anyone who gets a shot in front of the garden will get a shot at free tickets. Not only that, if you get the vaccine at MSG, you'll also get some free Knicks swag or possibly meet some basketball legends from the Knicks. In the meantime, mobile vaccine sites are hitting beaches across the city this Memorial Day weekend in a push to try to get more people vaccinated. New York City Fleet Week begins today, but once again, it's being held virtually. The Navy says they want to keep everyone safe during the pandemic. And just like last year, officials are expecting millions to take online ship tours and to watch demonstration videos. Winnie the Pooh is fleeing the forest and heading to a new den off Broadway. A new musical adaptation of Winnie the Pooh is expected to hit the stage at Times Square's Theater Row this fall. And Winnie, Christopher Robin, all their friends are going to star in the show. It'll also feature the classic Grammy Award winning music. And the musical's debut is set for October 21st. Tickets go on sale Tuesday. Well, there's some rough weather out there. So, Maria, what do we need to know for the rest of the evening? That shower and thunderstorm threat is beginning to ease. It'll continue to ease as we get into the overnight. But if you do have some evening plans, still count on this, some of that being around. The temperatures are still going to be in the upper 70s, near 80 degrees with a lot of humidity. And that'll fuel that storm threat well into later this evening. And then by overnight, it's just isolated thunderstorm chances here. But one key change that we're definitely waiting on, that humidity. We felt it today. Dew point temperature, that's one way to look at it. When they're in the low to mid 60s, it is muggy. And that's what we have area wide through this evening. And by tomorrow morning, you start to see those 40s and 50s make a comeback. Eventually, by midday tomorrow, they will, and it'll feel much more comfortable. In the meantime, though, uh, still a little sticky by tomorrow morning as temperatures stay in the mid and upper 60s with some sun getting through later in the day. Well, there's no question social media is a powerful platform just as quickly as it can spread misinformation. It can unite people around a common cause. And one year ago, seeing those videos of George Floyd's arrest and his death spread across social media birthed a movement. The hashtag Black Lives Matter gained momentum and went global. News 4's Kay Angram takes a look at the power of posting. This time last year, while the country was grappling with the police killing of yet another unarmed black man, a movement was taking shape online. On May 28th, just three days after George Floyd died in police custody, the hashtag Black Lives Matter had been shared on Twitter a record 8.8 .8 million times. The next day, Floyd's name would become more Google search than coronavirus or Donald Trump. Accounts like Justice for George NYC began popping up on Instagram, where daily posts and updates would go on to attract hundreds of thousands of followers. Now, to better understand how social justice protests take root on social media, I met up with Chelsea Miller. A 24-year-old activist from Brooklyn and co-founder of what is now one of the largest youth-led civil rights organizations in New York. 
for Freedom March NYC, the day that we organized one of the largest protests in New York, that was May 31st, just a few days after the death of George Floyd. We posted the flyer at 12 p.m. and by 8 p.m. we came to Washington Square Park and that became the largest nonviolent demonstration that day in New York City. How has social media helped to keep the conversation going in terms of justice for George Floyd? We can literally carry around with us flyers, right? So we can literally pick up our phones, hop on Instagram, hop on a Twitter app and see what's going on. The second thing is that it helps spread ideas about what happened and about what happened in the aftermath as well. So a lot of people get their news from Facebook, Twitter, from Instagram, right? And so a lot of how people are communicating, navigating politics, navigating community, is in conversation with what's happening on social media platforms. And social media might help amplify, right, and help circulate this knowledge, um, but it doesn't create it, right? It doesn't create it. Social movements and people create that. People use social media to get off social media. Once they're off social media and in the streets, they're also broadcasting from the streets about what's going on. And so there's a kind of loop that happens. Protest brings awareness that these hashtags bring awareness that the trending topic brings awareness so that we can have some actual substantive change. A year later, Miller and her team are still using social media to get the word out. We are still outside organizing, still outside building the momentum, and just because the cameras turn off does not mean that we have done our work because the work continues. Work you can find in real life and online. Kay Ingram, News for New York. Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned next for the latest from New York Live. Today we're going to take you to some great spots along the west coast of Westchester, also known as the Hudson River, where you can enjoy an outdoor meal with a side of some much needed fresh air. Free Westerly Bar and Grill in Ossining is a nautical themed gastro pub that boasts views of the widest parts of the Hudson River and the Ossining waterfront. The restaurant is beautiful. It's designed to look like a lighthouse and it has this outdoor beer garden and sunset terrace that can seat up to 150 people outside. As you can see, the menu has a little something for everyone. We have pizzas, sushi, a crispy cauliflower, a lobster popper deli pasta, lobster rolls, watermelon, the list goes on. <laughs> Goose Feather, which is located in the King Mansion at the Tarrytown House Estate, is now offering a new social distance alfresco experience. Former Top Chef contestant Dale Talday is cooking up Cantonese barbecue, dumplings and noodles for diners. There is the dry aged beef pot stickers and the Kung Pao chicken wings. We have made our way over to the Irvington waterfront. We're at Red Hat on the River, and they have not just one, but two outdoor dining experiences that you can have here. You can eat out on the patio, or you can come up and eat on the rooftop. They also offer this space for private events, of course, following all the rules. We have Alpastor tacos, there's a banh mi pork bowl, and of course, something they're very well known for, the mussels and frites. And last but not least, we are at Harvest on Hudson in Hastings, and they serve upscale Italian cuisine with Mediterranean influences, but they're all about the garden to table here. They have this beautiful vegetable and herb garden, and they grow as many ingredients as they can here and use as many of them as possible in the dishes. And we have the most beautiful spread in front of me. Look at these tomatoes. They're beautiful. In fact, they grow the tomatoes here and make homemade tomato sauce that they put on their pizzas and pastas. Porteros for two, one of their best sellers, good for date night. Uh, and the rest of the seafood on the table is exquisite and beautiful as well. This food is almost too pretty to eat. So for all of you that have been looking forward to having your outdoor dining experiences again, there are so many great places along the river in Westchester. And if you don't have access to a car, say you're coming from the city, the good news is you can hop on the Metro North and they have stops in each one of the river towns. Just don't forget to bring your mask. I'm most proud of watching a young woman find her voice. That bag is my Parkinson's, so I beat the heck out of it. We want to make sure that people in the neighborhood have access to healthy food. There's always something good you can do. How awesome is that? Today's Community Connection, sponsored by Optimum, brings us to Great Neck, New York.
Just over 20 miles from Manhattan, Great Neck has it all. From a rich history to beautiful parks, restaurants for every palate, and resources to support its local families, it's no wonder the residents of Great Neck are a very connected community. Best of all, Optimum is powering the Great Neck community with super fast one gig internet service at home to connect faster than ever. So whether you're thinking about moving here or a day trip, Great Neck has it all. Open House NYC is home with you, Sundays at 9 a.m.